All right, continuing on with the collaboration tools, the next one we're going to look at is web editing. So it just says edit here. So why would you want to web edit when you can use your desktop? Well, if you want to uh, refresh the data, let's say I only wanted to make this NBA pl player salaries 20. Uh, 1990 to 2019 for something so minor I don't want to have to download the dashboard right or open the dashboard connect to the data sets publish it's a lot of steps right and when you're managing a lot of dashboards you kind of want to eliminate a month, as much of that as you want or as you can so if you click on edit which is right here right it's gonna take you to a page that looks very similar to tableau desktop Okay, so you can see everything that we publish is still down here. All our data sources are exactly as they were in Tableau Desktop. The main difference you're going to see is really like intricate things. Things where like, um, uh, I haven't got exact examples, but you'll see that you can't do everything that you can do in Tableau Desktop. That's why I only like to use this for very minor things. So let's go NBA player salaries. Let's say I want to edit the title. Let's say this is from, hang on, there we go, uh, 1990 to 2019, okay, and go OK, right? And then once I'm happy with it, right, I can just close it, right? Now, the other reason you do web editing is let's say someone else has built something. So sometimes this happens to me where someone will say, Jed, I've finished the first prototype for the design, check it out. So they'll send it to me and I'm like, okay, we might have to change a few things. So what I'll do is I can web edit myself. So I can come in here and I go, oh, maybe the colors they use aren't great. So I can edit it just here. And then when I close it, if I'm not the owner, it would create a new file. If I am the owner, it will update the existing one. So if I press close now, here you'll see save or don't save. That's because I'm the owner. If I'm not, you'll see... Um, I think it's save a copy or don't save from memory. Okay, so we click on save. And the great thing, because this is cloud, right, I don't have to email everyone out else or everyone out again. Okay, it's already updated. In if you're using like Excel files, you have to prep the files again, then you have to email everybody again. And you're basically every time you're emailing people is you're generating more and more files. Here you're not. Right, you're updating the existing one. So now I've got this here. And let's say it was my manager who said, Jed, can you just make sure that title had that thing there? So what I can do is, if I zoom in a bit, now that I've made that web edit, I can tag that person. So I use this button right here, comments. So click on comments. Okay, and we have this comment section here. Now I can type in basically whatever I want. But unless you come in and open this comments up, you won't see that. So it's important that you tag someone because you're telling someone. So what I do is you go at, and then obviously because I'm the only one there, but you can type in the name and then you click it. Okay, so that's the tag. And you can say, please have a look at this. It seems off. Right, and you can see that this particular view has been filtered. Let's say I click on Chicago Bulls or something. Okay, so it's filtered. When I'm tagging this other person, I want them to see what I'm seeing. Because otherwise, if I give them instructions, make sure you filter it this way, they could make a mistake. So in order to preserve this or send it off to the person, I can click this button down here. And it tags or takes a copy of the filtered view. So if I click on this, it will add it filtered and I go post. So what will happen is I'll receive an email saying this has happened, right? And let's say if I revert this back, right? To reset it back, actually we've got view north. Let's set this to original. Okay, so what happens is the person is going to get an email and they're going to get an image in that email saying this is what they've tagged you in. So if they click that image, it will filter it to what that per other person had filtered. So it's much easier to collaborate because you're suddenly, you're looking at the exact same data. I can't tell you how many times we've had issues because two people were just looking at two different data sets and they're going, it doesn't make sense. How come the values are wrong? Blah, 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 right? So you can skip all of that, okay? Instead of tagging, you can also share it. So if I click this share button, if I can turn back time, no, not that kind of share. 
If no, if you're too young, you don't know what that is. Share is <laughs> this person, right? So long, long, long time ago. But if you're old, you're probably laughing. Okay, so we got share view. So I can tag people again, right? So I can go Jed, and it will just email me that. Or I can take this link, right? I can copy it, click on this copy button here, and then send it to someone with an online license. When they click it, it'll take them straight here. Or I can embed this code. Let's say I want to put it on a website or something like that. I can use the embed feature as well, right? So that's your share. Uh, full screen is kind of obvious. It just does a full screen. Um, comments. Share, edit, subscribe. Oh, alerts. Okay, so the way alerts work, if I reset this, okay, it only works with continuous fields for the moment. Uh, uh, with Tableau, they haven't yet introduced it for discrete data sets. And if you don't really remember what that is, I'll show you the difference. So let's say I have the player salary here. It's mostly for dates. So if I do so the green ones are your continuous and your blue ones are your discrete. So if I do something like that, right, let's put the bars in here. Okay, these are all discrete. And if I, you know, expand them, oh no, there's not that much in that. But these are all discrete. Whereas if I change this to this one, that's continuous, right? Because then you have like a, this always scales because it's kind of it's continuous, right? So it only works with continuous. And and the way it works is, let's say I have a data set. This is actually a good example. Let's do running total, okay? And it's currently at 44 million, no, 44, what's that? 44 trillion? Billion, something like that, right? And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Let's make this 70. Okay, and I want to set an alert such that when this line crosses here, let me know, because this could either be good or bad. Let's say there are temperature readings. We want we don't want a certain temperature for some sort of machine to reach critical levels, or maybe it's like we want to know when we've made certain amount of sales. Whatever it could be, it basically is a trigger to tell you something has just crossed a threshold. So that's why this one should be continuous. Okay, so if I go back to here, where is it? This one, you can see that it's green, okay? Because that's the continuous one. So just be sure in case you're not seeing it. Right, so how do you set an alert? Well, in here, we're going to select anything in here, and we're going to go alerts. Okay, I'm going to go create. Okay. Now you can see the warning here, select a numeric access of a chart, then select alert. Now because this particular view, I've removed the alert, uh, I've removed the access, I can't really do it. So then what do we do? Well, we can just update the dashboard. So if I go edit, okay, we're going to come in here, we're going to go to the sheet, I'm going to add that header. So it is this one, we're going to go show header. So now we have an access, we close this, save it, now we have an access. So you can see why the web editing is so useful, because I can just do everything on the fly. And that's taken me all the way out, so let's go back in. Okay, let's go back to original. All right, we should have an access now. So you can see we have an access. So you have to click an access, like so. Then you're going to go alerts. I'm going to go create, right? So what are the conditions? I want it when it is above or equal to, let's say when it hits, what is that? Something million, I'm just gonna pick a random number. So let's say when, I, when it crosses something like that, right? Maybe that's a bit too high. Let's get rid of one. Okay, so let's say it's already crossed it actually. So let's just say four. Maybe another zero. What am I missing? Maybe a zero? There we go. All right, so let's say it crosses that. Then I know, man, we've gone way over budget this year, right? So the subject is data alert, NBA salaries spent too much, okay? When the condition is true, so you can say when it's going to happen. Let's say it's only important at a weekly level and who's going to get this alert. Again, you can tag more and more people, okay? And then you go create alert. So what does it look like when you get an alert? Let's go find it. 
here's a sample one I got that I prepared earlier. So it looks kind of similar to the subscription one. Again, you're going to say it's come from Tableau, right? You're going to get a picture of what it is that actually happened, what the alert was, and then it's going to have a description of what the alert was up here. So it's going to say your count of salary or your sum of salary has exceeded 4 million. Okay. And let's get out of here and zoom out. Right. And that's basically how an alert works. It's very, very simple to use, but very powerful. All right. So that's your alerts. And I think we'll leave it at that for this one. And then there's like a few more additional features up here. And then we're done. All right. So I'll see you soon.